Hello everyone. Welcome to Hamro Digital School. Today you are going to learn about the compound making process. And for compound making process, you need positive and negative ions. And before learning about the positive and negative ions, let's understand what are the prefix and suffix that is widely used in the chemistry. So first of all, we'll learn about the prefix and suffix that is widely used. For example, if you combine bisol with phyte, you will get bi sol phyte. But in this case, we'll learn about the bisulfide. We'll learn about the bisulfide. Bisulfide. So in this way, you are going to learn, you are going to combine the word and make a word that is useful for the chemistry. I'll be focusing on mainly the charges and how you're going to represent in symbolic form. So let's understand bisulfide, which is regarded as and written as SSO3 minus. And in this case, at SO4 minus. Similarly, for sulfate, we have got sulfide. So let's write the word sulfide, which is written as S double minus. That means sulfide has got sol. The word sol means always remember there are two minus. And similarly, sulfide, sulfide, you have got SO3 minus minus. Similarly, sulfate, sulfate, Fit, which is written as SO4 minus minus. Now let's talk about the force. Force plus phyte, which will give you phosphide. Phosphide. If there is S minus minus, then you can write down P triple minus. The force, if you remember the word force, then remember there is always three negative charges. Similarly, phosphide. Force phyte. It is written as PO3 triple minus and last one that is phosphate phosphate which is written as PO4 triple minus so in this way your first series is completed and then we'll be moving to our second series where we you'll be learning about night and glow let's wait for the next series thank you so much Okay, now you have learned about first series that is related to bisol, sol, and force. Now we will be learning about the nike and clo. So how we are going to join this word prefix and suffix and make a compound. So let's understand first of all nike series. Nike with ride. What is the compound? That is a charge that is nike ride. Next nike plus ride that is nike ride. Similarly, nike plus red will give you nike Read. So in this way, you can combine prefix and suffix and make a symbolic word and that word can be represented in form of the charges. Night ride, which is written as N triple minus. Night ride, which is written as NO2 minus. Similarly, for night red, you have got NO3 minus. Now we have a next series, which is known as the chloride, chloride and chlorate. So chloride. C H L O R I D E chloride. Next chloride, chloride, and next we have got chlorate. Next we have got chlorate. Here chloride, which is simply C L minus, and we have got chloride, which is written as C L O two minus, and next we have got chlorate, which is written as C L O three minus. So these are the series related to night and clo. Now Later, we'll be combining this word with the positive ion and we'll try to make a compound. First, we need to understand the radical and the radicals and the types of the radical will be explained in next series. First, you need to practice prefix and suffix for bisol, sol and phos and then prefix for night and clo. So, next series we'll be discussing about the radicals and types of radicals. Thank you so much. You have already completed first series and second series. Now we'll be discussing about the important negative parts that is widely used in the chemistry. So let's talk about this section which is related to chemical word and formula and later on we'll be joining with the positive part. That means positive plus negative will give you the chemical compound. So carbonate. Carbonate is CO3 minus minus and bicarbonate HCO3 minus and hydroxide which is OH minus and hypochlorite. So these are the series. These are the main series 
you need to remember hypochlorite chloride and chloride along with power chloride along with power chloride so we'll be focusing here hypochlorite cyano minus chloride clo2 minus and chloride this is related to clo3 minus and similarly if there is a power chloride then there is a clo4 minus so these are the series similarly for cyanide we have got cn minus and silicate sio3 minus minus and similarly for zincate if you look at the zincate then it has got zno2 minus minus similarly a last one borate borate is related to bo3 triple minus these are the main series that you need to remember second we have got oxide which is related to o minus minus and manganese so if you talk about the manganese and power manganese so these are related now first of all you need to understand how to remember manganese and power manganese so manganese mno4 minus minus and similarly for power manganese you have got mno4 single minus and last one you have got chromate and dichromate which is related so if you remember chromate then you can remember dichromate easily so for chromate we have got CrO4 minus minus and dichromate we have got Cr2O7 minus minus. These are the series for the halide series. So halide series can be remember easily. Fluoride, we have got F minus chloride, Cl minus bromide, Br minus and iodide, finally I minus. So these are the series of the negative parts which are important and these are widely used in the chemistry form the compound if you understand these radicals especially positive and negative radicals then you can make any types of compound that is given in the chemistry i hope that you have understood the negative parts which can be joined and next section we'll be discussing about the positive parts and then we'll finalize compound making process thank you so much okay most of you have already understood about the negative parts now what about the positive parts that you need to combine with the negative parts to make the compounds so we'll be discussing about the positive parts starting from one important series in chemistry that is related to os and ic so whenever we use this type of suffix, it will be easy to remember whenever you use this type of suffix that will be easy to remember and you can understand effectively so let's talk about the copper so copper is also known as the Cuprous form, which is written as cuprous, that's why we used to write cuprous in this case, and here cupric. Cupric. Similarly for mercury, if you look at the mercury, then there is a mercurius and mercury. This is <coughs> mercurius, and this is known as the mercuric. This is known as the mercury. Similarly for iron. The word that is given is ferro, so join the ferro with os, that is known as the ferrous and similarly for ic form that is ferric. Now we have got next gold which is given as the auro, so if you join then you will get the word auros and next one you have got auric. Similarly for lead which is known as the plumbus, so we use the word plumb and plumb plus os will give you plumbus and similarly plumb plus ic will give you plumbic and last one you have got teen which is stannous so we'll be joining stan plus us which will give you stannous and similarly for ic you'll get stannic these are word form these are word form of the positive ion now you'll be making symbolic representation so let's talk about the copper so cuprus is written as cu plus and cupric is written as Cu++. Similarly for mercury, you will be writing Hg+, and for mercury, you will be writing Hg++. This is a symbolic representation in the ionic form. And next one, you have got iron, ferro, which is written as Fe++, and ferric is written as Fe++. Next one, you have got lead, which is plumb. So remember these two, lead and tin, these have got similar charges. So lead plumbus which is PB plus plus and plumbic PB 4 plus that means 4 charges. Similarly for stannous you will be representing as SN plus plus and stannic you have got SN 
food blocks. So in this way, you can remember the copper, mercury, iron, gold, lead and tin in this series. And now time to combine positive with negative ions to form the compound. So before learning, we have got simple series that is related to alkaline series, alkyl series and there are other series that you need to remember. So thank you so much for taking your time. So next we'll be learning about the compound making process by the help of positive and negative ions. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. Welcome to Hamro Digital School. Today you are going to learn about the radicals, types of radicals and how they are combined with the negative parts to form the chemical compounds. So let's talk about the radicals. What are the radicals? So radicals are the charged particles. Charged particle means this may be the positive ions or maybe the negative ions. So learning about the radicals, you need to remember what are the types of radicals that is involved in the chemistry and how they are categorized in the form of the charge and how you are going to determine the valency by using the charge. For example, I'll give you one simple example. If you have got element that is related to Na+, plus, this means it has got valency 1. If you have got Al++, plus plus, triple plus, then look at this charge. If you look at the charge, the valency is valency is 3. So in this way, charge determines the valency by taking help from the charge concept and the valency concept. So we'll be focusing on the radical part. Radicals. Radicals are charged particles which is divided into two parts. One is positive part and another one is negative part. So if we talk about the radicals types, then these positive parts is also known as cations and these negative parts is known as the anions. So these are the categorized part, especially in the cations and anions. Now we'll divide the section. Dividing the section of cation and anions, we'll make a chart and then we'll try to remember the important part that is useful in your exam and how you're going to combine the compounds, combine the compounds and charges to form chemical compound that is used in the chemistry. Okay, thank you so much. Hello everyone. Welcome to Hamlo DJ School. Now, you are going to learn about the positive ions and negative ions together to form the chemical compound process. So this is one of the important sections. So if you have missed previously what is about the negative ions and what are the radicals, then you need to focus on mainly the two parts. These are the main sections that you need to remember. So first we will be learning about the positive parts which is also known as the basic radicals and similarly for negative parts which is also known as the acidic radicals. So let's write the symbolic representation for the sodium. Look at the point, sodium and potassium, these are similar, that's what I've combined together. So if you remember sodium, sodium symbolic representation is Na, but we'll be talking about the charges. That means Na plus. Similar for potassium, K plus. Look at the charges. Sodium and potassium has got similar charge. So if you remember sodium, potassium will be automatically same charges and the compound formation process will be the same. Only there is a change in the symbolic representation. Similar for calcium, Ca++ plus plus. for magnesium you have got Mg++ plus plus. and for aluminium you have got aluminium 3 plus aluminium I got 3 plus that's why it is exception exception and ammonium ammonium you have got NH4 plus so these are positive parts and for negative parts we have got HCO3 minus which is bicarbonate carbonate CO3 minus minus these are one series always remember if you learn by making the series, then it will be easy to remember. Next, we have got hydroxide, OH minus, and similarly for oxide, O minus minus, one series. It is easy to understand. Sulfate, SO4 minus minus, phosphate, PO4, triple minus. This is also one series. Always remember, these are the important negative parts, which is used in chemistry. And last one, nitride, and triple minus, nitride which is NO2 minus and night red, this is known as the NO3 minus. So these are the series. Now remaining part that is related to chemistry is, one is hydride, which is widely used, hydride written as H minus and similarly, next one you have got theosulfate. Theosulfate, which is written as S2O3 minus minus. Always remember this series. And next, we'll be learning about combining positive and negative parts 
and formation of the thumb power. So I'll give you some hint related to positive and negative parts and you'll understand later on by using your own worksheet and then we'll practice together. Thank you so much. Okay, now all of you have already learned about the positive ions and the negative ions. Now let's try how we are going to combine this compound, positive with negative and whether there is a formation of a compound or not. Let's check together. So I want you to guess the compound. Guess the compound yourself. If you want to combine, for example, I'll give you one hint. If you want to make compound sodium with any negative parts, let's say, for example, sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate. This is sodium sulfate. One part is, this is known as the positive part. And this part is known as the negative part. Now let's write the formula of sodium and sulfate. Sodium, which is written as Na, but due to charge, we're talking about the radical. That's why you need to write the radical Na plus, and the one is SO4 minus minus. Similarly, previously we have discussed about charge. Charge determines the valency. That means Na has got one charge, so I'm writing one. SO4 has got two charges. That means I'm writing two. Now you have to crisscross. You have to exchange the valency. If you exchange the valency, your new compound will be Na multiply 2, Na2, SO4 multiply 1, SO4. Now look at the formula. Finally, your sodium sulfate compound is ready. So in this way, you are going to make compounds for potassium as well as for calcium, magnesium. So you want to try next compound? Okay, fine. I'll give you one hint. Again, there is one hint for next compound. Let's try magnesium. So magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide and magnesium sulfate or maybe magnesium phosphate. You can try any compound together, but I'll be focusing on a specific compound that is related to magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium and then hydroxide. Let's see, this is Mg plus plus and hydroxide we have got OH minus. This is according to the chart. So you need to remember the chart and then you can make a compound. Similarly, magnesium valency is according to the charge is 2 and hydroxide valency is 1. Now let's crisscross. That means let's crisscross the valency, exchange the valency. Mg multiply 1, you'll get Mg and OH multiply 2, OH2. But you can write in this way because OH2 means there is one oxygen, two hydrogen. That's why we used to enclose inside the bracket. This is the correct way of writing formula. That is equivalent to MgOH whole under 2. This is the correct form of writing formula. So in this way, you are going to make a compound and then starting from positive and negative ions, you will be making compounds yourself by using your own worksheet that is provided by your teachers which is also known as a smart worksheet and then you will understand how the compounds are formed. First you will try and then we will provide the hint according to the process of chemical compound making process. I hope that you have already understood the positive and negative ions. This is the basic foundation in the chemistry and if you understand positive and negative ions then almost 90% of the problem can be solved in the chemistry. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Hamro Digital School. Thank you so much.